You ever want to know how to make folk instruments like this one? Well today, I'm going to show you how to make this one. This one is something I made up myself. It's a hybrid between a thing called a Byzantine Lyra. It's a whole family of instruments, the Lyra family. You got Byzantine Lyra, Calabrian Lyra, you name it, some country got a Lyra. And some Nordic instrument called a Taga Harpa, which also has its own family. There's like the Shetland Goo or something like that, which has two strings, a Taga Harpa. There's a big family of those instruments too. This is a hybrid of both. I call it the Fiddle Lyra. Fiddle Lyre, Fiddle Lyra, you name it, call it something. This thing's a ton of fun to play. It's tuned like a Cretan Lyra. And basically, we have this empty area here, like the Taga Harpa. And it also has a bridge, like a Lyra. It's a ton of fun to play. It's very loud because it has like the Lyra bridge. It's just an awesome instrument. So today, I'm going to show you how to make one. All right, now that we're in the workshop, I can show you how you make this thing. So basically, what you want to do, get a big fat board. This is like the thickest board, and it's like really wide that you can get at Home Depot. I didn't go to a lumber yard because I didn't have the time. I work a ton of jobs, so it's a pain in the ass. But yeah, so I got this shit. This is perfect for this project. All you gotta do to start it off, you have your template, you trace it out, and you put it on the wood. All right, now you got it traced out on the board, right? You're gonna wanna cut it out. So what I use, I use this guy. And seriously, you, it's like so crucial that you have a scrolling blade. Like when I first started making these instruments, I didn't use a scrolling blade because I was like fucking stupid or something. I didn't look it up, but scrolling blade is like way better because scrolling blade can cut curves and shit without fucking it up. So let's get started. Like once you have one side cut out, get a better look. These things on my design always get fucked up, but don't really matter, you know. Cause like you're gonna finish it later, and it's a folk instrument, you know. It doesn't fucking matter if you make it a little fucked up looking, you know. Give it character, give it style if you want a folky look, and that's the look I'm going for. I drill holes in this son of a bitch too. One's done. And that's what it looks like cut out. Now we gotta cut out the plate. And first we gotta cut out the back. But now we're gonna cut the back out. See, this is needed if you're gonna use violin to color Oh, here I put it. I put it here. So basically, this is needed if you're gonna use the pre made violin peg. Because if it's a full board, I have two inches deep, not gonna go through. Cut it thin, boom, you got plenty of room for your lyric. So I'm using this saw because I don't have a good saw. But this thing works fucking good because it never gets dull and it's fucking awesome. And uh, let's start cutting. Like my very stable workbench. Oh, what the hell fell now? 
That's why you don't want a workbench like this. You cut out the side and all the holes. Now you gotta make the front and back plate. All right, now that you got this guy cut out, we're gonna trace this guy on here. And this is the first step to making those plates I was telling you about. See, I make my instruments very simply and very sturdy. Cut them out of hardwood. Just throw his fucking thing against the brick wall, it's probably not gonna break. Also, plates, boom. Make one out of this shit here. Nail it on with carpet tech. No glue, because glue gets fucked up left and right, you know that. So like, we're just gonna trace this shit on here, and we're gonna flop it over, boom, trace it like that. We're gonna start like this. I don't even need to trace the whole thing, because we're not gonna do the whole thing, you know? Well, I'm gonna trace out the inside on this one, because this one is gonna have the hole, because it's gonna be the front piece. We want to trace this one. Since this one I left it pretty high, it would be cool for it to go up higher. So I'm gonna do it like this. And I'll have almost like a, I don't know, Byzantine or something. Look. This is the back, so you can just pencil the shit as dark as you can even possibly want. It's like no one's gonna see this. It's gonna be tacked up against the back of our board. Make sure you get all the edges. It's like some spots are a pain in the ass. Like they don't want to get the edges, you know? Yeah. Alright, it doesn't matter if it matches perfectly either, because basically we're gonna like saw this shit up and stuff. Like when we're done with this, we're gonna like finish it. So I have like a belt standard machine and I'm gonna buzz it all down. And I think it's really Okay, now that we traced it out, let me show you. <laughs> Gotta trace it out nice and neat. I'm not an artist, so I can't copy it by eye, but like, I can trace it out. So now we gotta cut it out, and we gotta put the holes here first. So I got another template, and I'm gonna use that. See, the holes on this design are positioned right where the bridge will be. And it's crucial that you have the bridge put in the right spot, so you can reach all the notes up here when you're playing it. So if you put the bridge in a fucking spot, like in the middle, it's not gonna have all the notes. If you put it down here, you're gonna have way less notes. So it'll be all fucked up. So you gotta have it in a good spot. Now, I have a spot on here, which I like, so that's where I put my bridge. And that's also where I gotta put my holes with this design. So let me grab my template, and we'll be right back. Alright, so I am back with the template. This thing's excellent for cutting the holes in the right spot. And it'll help you position the bridge in the right spot. So, because this is a measurement related thing, I'm gonna tell you the measurements I used on my one so you can put the bridge in the right area. The bridge, I go from the bottom all the way to 140 millimeters in the middle. 140 millimeters is important because that's where we put our bridge so it'll be properly tuned up here. Now, that only applies if your instrument is about like 19 inches long with millimeters. Um, like 485 millimeters long. So 140 millimeters up, but 485 or whatever millimeters long. And it's 485, so that's the measurements you want. Now, I just gotta trace it on a template. Got all the measurements here here and boom, we're good to go. Alright, so I cut out the holes, and now with some of the excess wood, I'm gonna make a bridge. So what I did here, my wood is about one and a half inches thick. 
And that is what this is, because it's going to dip down through there and connect to the back plate. Because the bridge is what connects the strings to the soundboard and will make it all vibrate and make the noise. So we need that to connect to the backboard. And a good height that I like to use is two inches up from that line. So we just need to mark that at two inches. And we'd be good. Alright. Now that we got this thing made and this thing's holes cut out, we're gonna put the bridge aside and we're going to finish this first. So basically, I got these carpet tags. These things are super cheap and they're perfect for the job if you want like a real folk art looking look. So what we want to do is carefully position everything so that it's in the best spot when we finish it. Because the finishing part really will correct any kind of issues where stuff don't line up and look sloppy. Good. So I'm going to put the first tag all the way up here. I'm going to scrap out of the way. thing together I noticed that there was some cracking on the bottom probably from this hole I drilled a while back you know so instead of using that method I'm gonna improvise because it's folk art you know it's like we don't give a shit so we're gonna <laughs> make like this fucking thing here and uh, this is gonna be the bottom and we're gonna use it as like a tie so I'm gonna like drill a hole and put a screw for it so it should work all right, with that whole tail beast business out of the way, we just gotta tack the front on. All right, as you can see, we finished the tacking part. So now it's starting to actually look like an instrument, and not just some weird fucking frame. So now, I put this guy aside, and we're gonna work on this guy. So this bridge, we need to find two. So what I want to try doing is we need to make it connect here and connect to the back. So I'm going to keep filing it down with sandpaper. This guy here. We'll file this guy down and it'll be good. All right, so we got a bridge. Now I'm just going to keep sanding it until we have enough area that this allows us to touch the bottom. The reason I'm not using an electric sander is because I don't want to take too much off by accident. And let's see how this goes. A little bit more and we should be good. Here's what our finished bridge looks like, and as you can see, if we pop it through the sound hole, it is centered right here. And you might not really be able to see it because the light's kind of shitty, but I saw it holes. Like, see these little digits there? I cut those spots so that the strings will stay in those spots when I string the thing. And that's how it transfers the sound through the bridge to the soundboard. So now, honestly, we just got to do a lot of finishing work. That's some of my favorite part. Now we got to make the string holding thing. So I'm going to use part of the neck thing here. I'm going to chop this thing off. This is from an older one I made. And basically, this will be where we'll attach our string and it'll attach to the base thing also. Alright, here we got the finished piece. 
And as you can see, I'm going to do an X cross thing here, and we get the three string spots. So before I do the finishing process, we're going to have to do the uh, reaming of the tuning hole. So basically, this is where the pegs are going to go, and there's a special tool called a tuning peg reamer. And we're going to ream the holes with this tool. So basically, I'm just going to keep my peg there, and I'm going to keep doing this with the tool until I get the holes to the right size. So before I reamed the peg holes, I realized I drilled the holes too small. Really retarded move on my part, but I tried to redrill it, and what a, it fucked itself up. And I figured that would happen, because that happens when you re-drill holes, and when you drill holes, after you cut things really fine and narrow like this. So that's why it's extremely important to make sure you're drilling your holes big enough and drilling them very early in the process so that stuff like this doesn't happen. So you seriously don't want to fuck it up like this, you know? But yeah, so now that I got that done, this one isn't going to be my fancy one. This is going to be like my beater one, so I don't really give a shit about it. But I'm just going to like uh, finish it off now. Do a finishing one. Alright, now we're going to just finish it off with this. This is one of my favorite parts because it's actually kind of fun. So what you want to do, you want to make it nice and smooth, you know, smooth around the edges, smooth off all the bumps, like see how this is kind of uneven here, so smooth that off, basically using this tool, you want to make all the sharp edges disappear. Alright, now that we hit it with the grinder, you can see that it got a lot smoother edges, everything's more rounded now. Now we really just got to use like rough sandpaper on the edges and then I'm going to go over it with fine and then it's going to be nice and smooth and we can do the final finishing step. Alright, so now is the part where I finish it with wood burning. So I'm going to basically burn this like little Slavic texture in because I'm Slavic, part Slavic. So I've been burning this ancient like Slovak logo in so it's kind of like an X, right? So you do one way boom. The other way, boom. Like that. Don't have to be perfect because you know it's folk art. Boom, like that. Boom. There. This Slavic logo is the logo that I've been burning everywhere. I'm just going to go around the whole way and burn all these X's in everywhere. Alright, so as you guys can see, I just did all the wood burning. I actually might do a little more here. I just realized that we had that there. I forgot. But yeah, so I did the wood burning. Another piece did fall out up here, so I'm a little concerned about that. But then again, it's like, I don't really care about this one. I already made one of these, but this one's actually really nice looking. I'm not going to stain it. The last one I did, I stained. But this one, because we have this little piece sticking out and this, I feel like the contrast between the lighter wood and the more darker wood, it just looks really nice. So I'm not going to stain it. I'm just going to put, like, Old English on it. So yeah, I'm going to do a little more burning, and we'll see where we'll go from there. Alright, now you can see that we've done a little more wood burning. So I did some more details around the edge to make up for all the shit that got fucked up up there. So yeah, I burned down there. And now we just really need to coat it with some, basically, furniture polish. Alright, so now I'm going to put on some Old English furniture polish and cleaner. This stuff works pretty good. The good thing about this shit is, like, you don't even need to wear, like, a fucking respirator or that bullshit. Like, like fucking other fucking wood polish and shit. Yeah, this one works good. Bring that the drain. Kinda like linseed oil. So here it is. After I made it. So this is with the old English furniture polish on it. Looks really cool. Like if we put it up close, you can see like the beautiful orange and like lighter color with like the pine and maybe birch, you know? And it just looks really nice with like everything, like seriously, you know? And I tuned it really cool too. So like basically there's this instrument called the Cretan Lyra. 
It's in this instrument family, and it's tuned like this. So this is four, this is one, this is five. And because of that, you're not as limited. Like for example, if I show you another one, like a two string one, this is based on some instrument called a gu. This one's also a lot quieter. So this one's pretty limited because this area here So like, I really can't get many notes. The advantage of having the three string, boom. You got all those extra notes when it's tuned like this. Like, I got like a full octave there. Other one, you don't got shit. And this one's way louder too. Not only because it's deeper. But because I have this awesome bridge here. This is like the one on like all the Lyra family instruments. Like the Calabrian Lyra, Byzantine Lyra, etc. And it connects both the front and the back soundboard. So it's like double the loudness. Like this one is like... Like that loud, and if I show you another one, this one I made a couple days ago. This one, it doesn't have the connected thing, same exact like shape and everything. It's a little out of tune right now, but as you can tell, it's a lot quieter, and it's just insane how that awesome bridge really makes a difference volume wise. So let me play you something on this awesome lyra. You guys enjoyed watching this seriously try making one of these it's a ton of fun like before I started making these I just really played music I would try making crap off things like out of like trash and stuff but once I started making stuff like this hey something that's really fun great hobby to have fun just messing around on these instruments something to really enjoy hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial you guys have an excellent night